Then the Gibeon sent word to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal and said, don't abandon your servants. Come up quickly and help us. Save us. Help us. Because all the Amorite kings from the hill country have joined forces against us. And Joshua activates immediately. Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his entire army, including all the best fighting men. So he gathered all his strength. He put together the best structures that he could and he moved immediately to rescue his brethren. Number one, we are massive expression of the kingdom in the earth. I, I think we all agree on that. We, we are the Congress, us. We are a massive expression of the kingdom in the earth. Heaven hears our words, sees our actions, and definitely is involved in the process. It's impossible at this point in time on planet earth to, to define the movements of the kingdom without seeing the structures of the Congress. Uh, we are not, we are, we, we together are massive, cannot be missed. Uh, a very significant part of the expression of the kingdom of God in the earth. And that was not produced by an anointing, that was produced by a journey. And that's why I like that, that, that phrase, that line. I think it's in dimensional war, that verse. We are a people purified and holy. Perfected on the path they have come. It is the power of the journey that forged us and made us strong. Uh, we, we, we are very, very, very uh, grateful for a long journey in Christ that is consistent and that has made us all strong as a people. Not just individually strong, but strong together to accomplish what God wants us to do. So that's the truth. We are a massive expression of the kingdom in the earth. And our movement cannot be ignored in the spirit realm. Either by God or by the enemy. Our movement, our massive movement cannot be ignored. We are positioned to become even more massive in the near future. All signs are for exponential growth. For becoming even more massive, even more formed, even more powerful in the future. That's the direction we're going in. Not stopping, not diminishing, just increasing. So we are positioned to become even more massive in the future and all our action is linked to a representation of the body of Christ. So these are just truth positions that we need to rehearse. Uh, that is truth. That is truth, not just a fact, it's truth. All our actions, everything we do is linked to a representation of the body of Christ. That's never ever going to be unlinked anymore as we go forward. Amen. That's a living reality at the back of our, our minds, at the foremost of our thoughts. Uh, we're always thinking about the body of Christ. And we're always thinking about what we do in representation of the body of Christ. These are very important truths. So let's go back in time. Joel chapter 2, verses 1, 2, 3, and verse 11. Blow the trumpet and sound. How many people think we did that? Sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is coming. It is close at hand. This is a guy uh, living 700 years before Christ who is talking from the future. He's talking from the future. He's in the spirit realm and he's describing a reality which doesn't even, put, doesn't even function in the day in which he lives. It is close at hand, as he says. And he's prophesying from a day when it is clear that the day of the Lord is coming and it is very close. The proximity to the finish is very near. And he says in that day, blow the trumpet, sound the alarm. It is a day of darkness and gloom. It is a day of clouds and blackness, but like dawn spreading across the mountains. A large and mighty army comes. How many people sang that? Amen. We sang that. We sang the scripture. So it's a day of darkness, a day of gloom, but dawn is like new light rising. Dawn is light rising. Dawn is the formation of a new day. It's a new season. It's freshness. When you think of dawn, you think of freshness. Uh, something arising, something being birthed into, into reality. So it's a day of darkness, a day of gloom, but like dawn, spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes. It's really amazing. You don't consider connect a large and mighty army with dawn. It's like the war is the birthing of a new day. Which is a very strange image. Like dawn, you would think something, a, 
a lot more gentle. <laughs> you know, the large and mighty army swarming over the mountains, and that's the birthing of freshness, it's the birthing of a new day. That war starts something fresh and new in the earth. But it says, such as never was in ancient times, nor ever will be in ages to come. A mighty army spreads across the mountains like dawn, such as never was in ancient times, never will be in ages to come. And that's a very significant statement. Want us to keep. Before them fire devours, behind them a flame blazes. Before them the land is like the Garden of Eden. Behind them a desert waste. Nothing escapes them. How many people sang that too? The Lord thunders at the head of his army. His forces are beyond number. That means more people were in the battle than those who stood upon the earth. One uh, prophet prophesying says, from the ends of the heavens and from the ends of the earth they come. That means massive mobilization of spiritual forces also took place in the battle. And that's why it's a day that never was in ancient time and a day that never will be. The Lord thunders at the head of his army. His forces are beyond number. Mighty is the army that obeys his command. The day of the Lord is great. It is dreadful. Who can endure it? Like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, such as never was in ancient times, nor ever will be in ages to come. That is a pivot point. That's a pivot. The GGP event, which we think is, is a prophetic fulfillment and some measure of this scripture. Amen. A prophetic fulfillment in some measure. A whole planet moving forward. In a, in, a, in a prey event that has never before, never before has the world mobilized itself as one army across an entire planet before. It could not be done before because the technology wasn't there before. The world had to develop to a certain place for that to happen. It's a pivot point. That's a pivot. A pivot is like that point right there, balancing the times, such as never was, nor ever will be, in ages to come. So we can say the GGP event and process is a pivot point in the movement of the times. We believe that. A, a precise standard falling into an ordained slot of God's predetermined will. No reference point can be used to determine its architecture because such as never once nor never will be. So there's no reference point. There's no way to go back and see what people did. It's a one-time thing that even if we pray again, it will never be the first. It will never be the first. It will never be quite like that. The, the impact in the spirit realm has already been accomplished. Things have already shifted. There will never ever be an impact like that ever more again. Even if next month or next year we mobilize another prayer and release a big gun, it will, it will never be as it was the first time. The first time ever that the princes in the heavens ever received such an assault against their positions. Such as never was or never will be. No reference point. It is outside the trajectory of normal historical movement. And it is in direct defiance of the state of the times. Because a day of darkness and gloom, but like dawn across the mountains, an army comes. In defiance of the times. The times are darkness and gloominess and and, uh, and just, just evil, but like dawn, like breath of new life, like new rising light. Something is operating in defiance of the times. An army comes. These are just some things we want to consider. Amen? A pivot point, a moment or an occurrence that causes a dramatic change in times or circumstances. A pivot point. And there you see the times balancing upon this point. It's going to make a difference. A moment or an occurrence that causes a dramatic change in times or circumstances. That's a pivot point. And for us, this must first be individual and then corporate. So we're saying the GGP is a pivot point. It's a moment, it's an occurrence that causes a dramatic change in times and circumstances. But that must first be individual for each one of us. The GGP, the whole structure of it, the day of the GGP, the reports, the environment, the context, 
the sound, the feeling of oneness, the sense of globalness, all of that must first be a pivot point in our individual lives. A moment or an occurrence that causes a dramatic change in our times and circumstances. Long before we go to consider what that does with the Congress, that moment must be a pivot point in our life, a point in which things change, a point in which things move, a point in which you perceive things differently, a point at which your faith moves in a different direction, your sense of empowerment moves in a different direction. It changes who you are, just being part of that and seeing that and being within that. That is a signpost for our human mortal lives upon the earth. Most of us will live up to 80 years old. Let's assume that we live to 80 years old. That moment has to be a pivot point in your mortal life. So forever, when you get to 90, you'll be looking back and saying, I remember that moment. That changed everything. That changed my sight of God. That changed my vision, changed my sight, changed my passion for the things of the kingdom, changed my sense of empowerment. It changed me in very significant ways. And I want everyone to consider in your own life, in the uniqueness of your own life, what is this pivot point for your individual life? How did that shift you? How did that change your mentality, change your attitude, change your family, change your manhood, change your womanhood? What did you grasp out of that massive movement of which you were part? The preparation for it, the sound of it, the, what takes place in your heart every time you hear that music. You hear those bugles begin to blow and something moves inside of you. So that pivot point must first be individual. And I do want us to consider what is the impact of that individual pivot point in our lives. Not just the day of prayer, but the whole reality of that. Our sight of God. And it's a pivot point for our corporate life or our community life as a congress on the earth. But this is also very, very important. Amen? And so... What decisions you're making? How does that change how you function? How does that shift some of your habits and your patterns? How does that enter your mind and create a new point of focus in your thinking? How does that change the structure of your soul? Your soul is your desires and what satisfies you and what you long for and what makes you excited, what makes you happy, what you establish as priorities or values inside of your inner life. How does that change the structure of your soul? How does it change the formation of your spirit, your grasp of faith and sight and wisdom and knowledge and hunger for the things of God? How does that change your habit patterns, make your behavior strange? How it structures and changes the operations of your humanness in the earth? That's a very important thing. Amen? A pivot point in the movement of the time. First of all, we have altered the structure of the heavens and broken the power of the resistance. <clears throat> We have altered the structure of the heavens. No one in this room knows exactly how it was altered. No one knows what prince moved, how rankings changed, how plans were aborted, how strategic power was smashed. No one knows. All we can see in the earth is impact. We see unprecedented, unforeseen, unexplainable movements at the highest places of power in the earth. I mean, we see the earth shifting and moving, and we see ridiculous things happening. We see, the Bible says, like Solomon says, fools riding on horses and princes walking on the ground. And we're looking at this amazing spectacle of a world careening into folly, into nonsense, all across the earth. We have altered the structure of the heavens. All we know is that something changed in the heavens and the resistance power was broken this is then how you should pray Jesus said this is how you should pray said Jesus our father is in heaven your name is hallowed your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven this is from the mouth of Jesus himself and he's telling us you have to pray this way this is how you should pray this should be your concern this should be your focus. That the will of God should be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And this is from the mouth of Jesus himself. Telling us what we should do. What we should long for. What we should aim for. 
that his will must be done on earth. That's a big implementation and execution. God has a will that can be brought forth on earth, and the Congress is part of the execution of that will upon the earth as it is in heaven. So we can say we have closed the gap between divine intent and earthly implementation. That's what Jesus is talking about. Your will or the divine intent must be done on the earth. That is earthly implementation, and it must be done as it is in heaven. So another way Jesus said, close the gap between the divine intent and the earthly implementation. And we know that through the GGPE, in the removing of the resistance, that gap was closed. And that's an important structure in reality. That things will happen faster and more emphatically. That when God wills things in heaven, that they appear on the earth without delay, without resistance. And we want to live in that kind of world. Close the gap between divine intent and earthly implementation. Psalm 33 verses 6, 9 and 13 to 16 from the NIV. This is what the word of God says. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made. The starry host by the breath of his mouth. That's a creator. He spoke and it came to be. That's the system. He spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. Now he commanded and there was an intervening time of resistance. And then sometime later when the devil chose or when he was beaten back, then things happened in the earth. This is how it is. He spoke and it came to be. He spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. And we want to live inside that structure of reality. That's what we're fighting for. Amen. He spoke from heaven. The Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on the earth. He forms the hearts of all. Who considers everything that they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. From heaven, the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place, he watches all who live on the earth. Everybody tell your neighbor, I live on the earth. He watching me. He who forms the hearts of all, he formed my heart. He considers everything that they do. Look at the computing power of the mind of God. No king is saved by the size of his army. That is an attack upon the logic of the earth right there. Attack upon the fact that size and power gives you precedence. No king, none, is saved by the size of his army. No warrior really escapes because of his great strength if God sets a snare for you. And that God, when he spoke, it came to be. When he commanded, it stood firm. And we fought with God to end the resistance. We fought for the truth of the word of God to come in the earth. Amen? Those are the conditions that we want at the end of time. It's in the word of God. That's a beautiful scripture, isn't it? So with altered heavens, greater synchronization is possible. That's a powerful word. Synchronization is possible. This is a quote from the EAD. The two dimensions can now operate in perfect synchronization, each having immediate sight of the other and mutually calibrating action to match movement in either dimension at any point in the unfolding purpose of God. So we can say, these two dimensions are now looking at each other. No resistance in between. If this one moves, this one responds. If there's initiative here, this one responds. The two realms are calibrating against each other. If we plan for in gathering and sanctuary, God will make things happen. If we prepare resources and put jars, he will pour from heaven. And if he pours from heaven, we respond to what he's pouring. And then he responds to our action. The two realms are mutually calibrating with no resistance in between them. Amen? Because realms are transparent. And if we say in gathering, if we shout into Eritrea, God's already moving. Yes? And when God moves and opens nations, we are ready there with resources to move in. We want synchronization with God. And if we want synchronization with God, you want synchronization in your own life. There has to be a sense of being synchronized with the Spirit of God. You can't be saying one thing and living another. We can't be feeling out of sorts and out of step. There has to be a sense of divine flow 
and placement and being in the right place of God taking place in our life right now. We can't have wrong marriages inside the kingdom. We can't be sinning and in the kingdom. We can't be unbelieving when the kingdom is moving in faith. There has to be synchronization in our own life. So we want a synchronized life. And a synchronized life brings us to a state of peace. No striving. Death to self. Resting in God. Amen? And we're looking at that in our lives. That takes out the haste of your flesh and the trust of your lust and all these things vanish from our lives. And we walk in God. Two dimensions. Synchronization is now possible. We want a synchronized Congress, but you want a synchronized house. You want your house to be in a state of peace. And that allows us to check everything. Check your parenting. Check your values. Check your marriage. Check your life. Check to see if sense in the spirit realm to see if the atmospherics of your house are in sync with the spirit of God. We want that sense of being in Christ. Amen? As you go towards 2017 and beyond. This is Joshua. We're talking about synchronization. This is a great scripture, I think, that deals with human effort, human initiative, divine action, synchronized together. And I think this is a beautiful scripture dealing with with where we want to go. So in Joshua chapter 10, verse 5 to 14, five kings of the Amorites. These kings of the Amorites represent satanic powers. And these are the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmush, Lakshish, and Eglon. In those days, Jerusalem was the, the, uh, run by a bunch of tribes that didn't know God or anything of the sort. And they all joined forces together. This is an alliance of darkness. They moved all their troops and took up positions against Gibeon, and they attacked it. So there's, a, there's an initiative by the satanic forces. Then the Gibeon sent word to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal and said, don't abandon your servants. Come up quickly and help us. Save us. Help us. Because all the Amorite kings from the hill country have joined forces against us. And Joshua activates immediately. Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his entire army, including all the best fighting men. So he gathered all his strength. He put together the best structures that he could. And he moved immediately to rescue his brethren. So we see human initiative. This is happening in the earth. Then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Now that's when God talks. And we're looking at synchronization. Two realms moving together. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. So Joshua marched all night, all night. This is no sleep, you know. Right through the night, one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock, three o'clock, these guys are marching. Four o'clock, no sleep. Human effort is out there. And Joshua took them by surprise. And then the Lord threw them into confusion before Israel so that Joshua and the Israelites defeated them completely at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road going up to Beth Horon, Cut them down all the way to Azekah and Makeda. So they marched all night and then entered into a battle. The Lord confused them and the Israelites are running them down the road and cutting them down. And then something happens as they fled before Israel on the road down to Beth Horon to Azekah. The Lord hurled large hailstones down on them. More of them died from the hail than were killed by the swords of the Israelites. You talk about synchronization and coordination. Oh, there's human effort. It took something to march all night and then fight all day. These guys, it took an effort. It took an initiative. Our brethren are calling. Let's go. Bring the best. March all night. Fight all day. And then something happens. The Lord comes in. Hailstones start to fall from heaven. The Lord kills more by hail then we're killed by the swords of the Israelites. That's the context in which Joshua steps into a dimension of faith. That's the context in which Joshua steps into a dimension of faith. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Sun, stand still over Gibeon. Moon, stand over the valley of Ajalon. And all day the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nation avenged itself on the enemies. As is written in the book of Jashar, 
The sun stopped in the middle of the sky, delayed going down a full day. There has never been a day like it before since when God listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. The Lord heeded the voice of man. Amen. Synchronization opens up a doorway to the miraculous. That's when he shouted. He didn't just get up one morning and decide, you know what? I'll go in and stop the sun. He saw something happening. He realized, wait a minute, I'm in a space. Well, I just went up to fight and the Lord turned up. And, and I mean, I, I pursued, but the Lord, the Lord gave them into my hand. I'm fighting, but hailstones are falling from heaven. This is a day of synchronization. Anything is possible. This battle will go to the finish. Sun, stand still. And the sun stood still right in the valley of Ajalon. And they defeated them until the battle was over. The power of synchronization. We want to walk into that dimension with God. Amen. Possibilities post GGPE. It's in the word of God. Dimensions of reality that are released to us through his word. That you can't find in any school. Through any PhD. That no research can tell you. It's in the word of God. Because you don't know how to be until you read the word of God. You don't know how to exist until you read the word of God. You don't know how to act until you read the word of God. You don't know even how to see reality until you read the word of God. You have no life until you read the word of God. Things will go right by you and you don't know how to conduct yourself until you read the word of God. Isn't that a beautiful scripture? Makes you want to go home and say, Oh God, open my eyes. Cause me to see. Amen? It's right there. On the day, on the day, the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel. Joshua said to the Lord, this, he has never done this before. And he'll never be the same man after this. He just took over this thing from Moses and he stepped into a space. A divine moment. And he realizes when those hailstones start to fall. And he realized God is in this battle. And more people getting killed by hailstones than we chopping down along the way. And big rocks start to fall from heaven. He realizes this is not normal. God is here. Anything is possible. And this battle will not be aborted. Because if God came down here, it is going to the finish. These are our fathers that we're following. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord, he didn't talk to the son, you know. He said to the Lord, son, stand still. That thing just erupted out of him. I guess he probably wanted, but what in the world are you saying, boy? I mean, no normal man talks to the son and, and says, son, stand. He probably, this thing just erupted out of him. He realized, my God, and this thing erupted out and it actually happened. The sun stood still. There has never been a day like it before since when the Lord listened to a human being. When you sing that song, that's what you're talking about. Dimensional war. That's what you're talking about. That's not a prayer moment. That's a context of life that you're celebrating. That's the future of our Congress. Amen.